Welcome to Neon Speaks. I'm your host, Neon Devere de Rosa, and my co-host is AJ Dean. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to Neon Speaks. I'm Neon Devere de Rosa, your host, and also your uh, your advisor. I'm trying to help you um, get on the right tracks, and if we can do any help to you with Neon Speaks, we, that's what we want to do. So that's why we have you as guests. Um, I never inter uh, um, introduce the guests. I always let AJ do it because I always make a mess of it. <laughs> AJ, over to you. Thank you so much, Nina. And I just want to say you're an absolutely wonderful mentor and, and I love your heart. So I want to give a shout out to Nina Devere de Rosa because you make everybody's day so much better. But we have a spectacular show today. Tim, Tim Zimmerman, a mastermind speaker of the SM3 Success Program, an expert in Dale Carnegie training. And that's so exciting. And then we have the lovely and beautiful Marnine Lynn Fields. Now, she is an award-winning entertainer, actress, script writer, composer, author, and the, a famous Hollywood stunt woman, and she has been <laughs> called the original fall girl. She's beautiful, and she's my friend. Welcome. Welcome to both of you. Tim, how are you? Haven't seen you in a little while. I know. It's You're great looking, to be back. You're looking pretty good there. Did you lose some weight or something, or is it just good yeah, on the camera? Yeah, working out. Had to do something over this uh, this COVID thing. Yeah, yeah. Keep yourself together, right? Um, Marnine, I, I'm surprised being a stunt woman. You look nothing like a stunt woman. You look absolutely gorgeous. And um, what made you become a stunt woman? Well, in uh, 1973, I was one of three women in the United States to receive an athletic scholarship in gymnastics. They didn't give athletic scholarships in gymnastics to women back then. And I got discovered by Hollywood because of my gymnastics. And for 15 years, I was one of uh, Hollywood's top stunt women. But I, I had a bad accident and I didn't haven't done stunts since 1991, but I did 15 years of stunts. <laughs> And what was the most famous person you did a stunt for? Okay, well, this is very easy. Um, I'm the girl Clint Eastwood punched off the moving train in the gauntlet. And I went off the train backwards with a half twist. Clint Eastwood directed me and I'm in the scene with him. I got to beat him up inside the train and kick him. Oh, and then, he, wow. then you remember the famous scene? She says, you wouldn't hit a lady, would you? And uh, then I step in and phew. so it was. <laughs> That was one of the most uh, dangerous stunt the young girl performed on film really? that year because you can get sucked back under the train very easily and crushed and it was very complicated uh, your body goes at speed of the train as you leave and you got to make sure you're going the direction of the train or you get flipped back on it was um and i got a hug from him afterward they rolled the train back how, how old were you when you did that I was 20, 22. That was 1977. Okay, that's why you did it, because when you're 22, you have absolutely, totally, 100% no fear. <laughs> you know, you're the first person to say that. That is so true. I had no fear. Fear. No, that's what happens when you're younger, when you're, you know, when you get a little older where I am, you know, I'm 39 and holding. I've just been holding a little bit longer than most people. But all right. You look a lot younger Tim, than that. Tim, no remarks now, Tim. <laughs> but um, yeah, because when you're young, you, you don't mind that. But then, you know, I just wondered if you've been any, any of the other big movies. Um, anything else? Uh, me, any other big movies? Yes. Um, yes, I did uh, all of the Irwin Allen films, and I got connected to Shirley Jones. You can see my face looks kind of like hers. And I did, um, she asked for me, and Michelle Phillips, and I did, I had about um, 18 different series at Universal Studios and Warner Brothers, all the big series, Fall Guy and 20th Century Fox and Wonder Woman, um, I Party knew you did kid. Wonder Woman. I was waiting for you to say that because I thought, I bet she did Wonder Woman. I got beat up by Wonder Woman. Um, she threw me all over her apartment. And, and that's I got beat up by Wonder Woman, too. You probably got the temper. Tim, you probably got beat up by many women. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm not going to elaborate on that. 
I'm sure he got hit on by many women. He's oh so my God! This, let me tell you something. About, I just want to add one more thing about this uh, the stunt thing. I was the um, stand-in for Rita Hayworth wow. on her last movie. It was called The Grove, and um, Griffin was the producer. But I can't. I think they changed the name of the movie. But I was very proud of that because I thought, my goodness, Rita Hayworth. Oh my goodness, was she a good-looking woman? And <gasps> I can see your face. I can see a similarity in Ooh. Rita Hayworth. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> you're my you're my friend forever now. All right, Tim, let's go over to you. I haven't forgotten about you, Tim, and you're looking absolutely marvelous. And um, what is your latest? Because every time I talk to you, you have a latest thing happening. You are always getting bigger and better and learning more. I think you must spend 24 hours a day learning um, because that seems to be your forte. Yep. How are you? What are you up to? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Uh, so the big thing that's happened over the last, uh, really over the last couple of years is that if you remember the original uh, SM3 success yes. seminars was a blending of the Dale Carnegie type success training with mind development. Yes. Okay. So the, uh, the whole idea behind the, the mind development is that we become what we think about and what we believe about. Now, what developed from that was that it's your belief system that really propels your thoughts. So your, your thoughts come up from your belief system. If you remember the five laws of manifestation, I can go. I believe that. that. I believe what you're saying our, is true. Our, so I believe. Right. Our, our thoughts, when mixed, you know, you have the thoughts uh, that we think then that creates the words that we speak, which when mixed with emotion, which is your belief system, uh, helps you create decisions and then you take action or inaction. Inaction is still an action. Five laws of manifestation. But where do the thoughts come from? Your thoughts come up from your belief system and then it goes through, you talk about it to yourself and other people and then you check with your belief system and say, is that true? And the belief system says yes, because- How right. accurate How accurate do you believe the belief system is? Because we, we continuously um, change our minds and, and on a split second when we're saying things and doing things. So therefore that will disrupt your belief system in a split second. It can, and actually that's what changes your decisions but your belief system is coming from your unconscious subconscious mind, which the, the basic 95% of that was developed from birth to six years old. Remember we talked about that. <laughs> no, that's one thing we disagreed on because, I, but I, as, I, as I'm getting older, Tim, I, I'm believing you better than that, that the first five and six years of your life is really embedded in your complete mind, body, and feeling. I, I'm beginning to believe it. Well, that's what all psychiatrists say. So that is a... Uh, an and who are they to say? Say again? And who are they to say? <laughs> I'm just... Well, they've studied it. You know, so, I mean, you could go back to, to Freud and uh, Erickson and Jung and, you know, all of, all of the main, you know, theorists in re regards to that. Yes. But we came in with a, with a blank slate, right? We have a blank slate when we're born. And really, it starts in the womb as far as different things that are happening. And then from birth is six years old, everyone around you basically dumps their belief system into you, which develops your base belief system. And then that continues through age 20. Okay. So we, let's say we know that, let's say that's true. Yes. Okay. All of the good and all of the bad is in your belief system, right? So yeah. for instance, if you got attacked by a dog, right? And you're 10 years old, and another dog runs up to you, what is your reaction gonna be? Get away. Mm -hmm. it, it's gonna be fear. I mean, yep. that, the, that fear is going to come up. There's other people that see a dog running to them and they greet it, right? So that's all part of your belief, your base belief system. 
Mm-hmm. Well, what we're finding is that that first 20 years repeats itself. Okay, so the good stuff and the bad stuff repeats itself. So if you've had, uh, if, if you grew up like I did, you know, I grew up in an alcoholic family, you know, and had these things happen to you, I got beat up all the time. That's mm-hmm. what develops your personality traits and, and your behaviors. The big thing is that now, instead of trying to overcome that by controlling your thoughts and doing hypnosis and NLP and eye movement therapy, so on and so forth, the SM3 success program phase one actually goes into your unconscious subconscious mind with you and we pull out all of the negative weeds. So if someone had dramas and traumas, which still bother you, you know, if, if you know things happen to you, any abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, mental abuse happens. Let me ask you one question before you go any further on that. Um, a, a lot of people keep it within themselves. And I personally don't think that's a good idea. But then when you want to talk about something that's happened dramatically in your life, and you sometimes might feel ashamed of what it is, whatever it may be, but to yourself, you feel ashamed of it. But therefore, isn't it always good to kind of talk about it and get it out there and sort of, it's like relieving it from your body and like sort of, well, now I've got it out there, it doesn't really matter. Well, what we're finding, what we're finding is that uh, talking about it, uh, all that it does is reiterate and actually burns it into what uh, neuroscientists call your neuroplasticity deeper because you're feeling that negative emotion again while you're talking about it. So with this system, oh, yeah. with the SM, with the SM3, with the SM3 Ultimate Success System Phase One, people don't even need to tell me what the trauma was. Like if someone got raped at an early age, they might feel, uh, you know, they don't want to talk about it. Right. In other words, they if they feel shame and guilt, they don't want to talk about it, but they don't have to for us to get rid of it. We can actually pull that experience and either eliminate it or neutralize it in their unconscious subconscious so it doesn't bother them anymore. Okay. Actually- Marnie, Mar- Marnie um, you know, this is a great discussion and Tim is always so interesting. Is there anything in your mind or whatever's there that you, you feel you would like he just explained that you don't have to get it out if it's that bad because you're full of shame of what it may be and that he could actually get it out without you saying anything. How do you feel about that? Well, I believe that with uh, his past training and the amount of uh, intuition and different things, I think that he's very perceptive and that he would be able to possibly tune into certain vibrations and things where he would have an idea of what that person could be dealing with. And, you know, I do think it would be good to, you know, have an exchange there of some sort where, you know, the person Mm -hmm. is opening up and they can, because you're going to get more if, if, if there's more exchange rather than just kind of, is it this, I feel it could be that. Um, and, but yeah, I believe, especially with his, his uh, amazing training and the mind that he's got. Do you he, have something right now that you would like to ask him to see how he could rectify it or how he could get into your mind? <laughs> um, well, he knows, uh, we've, we've met a couple times and worked together a little bit, and he knows a few things about me. I guess that if there was something that I would like to, um, I, I, I think that, you know, I'm, I'm really sensitive and vulnerable, and I would like to be able to be stronger and stand behind, I should stand behind all these, you know, accomplishments with more success. But because in my childhood, I was never given a compliment and I was, you know, uh, beat down and different things. I would like um, 
to be able to get on that phone and, you know, have more strength in the way I maybe present things. Okay, Tim, how can you address that? Why don't we address that right now? Well, <clears throat> the, the real aspect about that for, for what I do, what we found to be uh, most critical or the, the real key to, to getting rid of whatever the root cause is, is actually going back to it you know going back to in memory the first time something happened where someone didn't feel confident or they felt unlovable or uh not good enough not smart enough not mm -hmm. beautiful or handsome enough and in going to that particular root cause that memory what we can do is use what we call the the sm3 a mastermind cleanse protocol, which is on a video so people can do it themselves, or if they hire me to do custom work with them, uh, we can we can fine tune it to the specific incident. And then in doing the, the protocol, basically it pulls it from the unconscious subconscious and replaces it with a positive. So if someone is feeling unlovable uh, or not good enough, then they can feel lovable and good enough and smart enough um, and smart and handsome and, you know, so on and so forth. What you've just said, um, I'd like to elaborate on, is that any time in our lives that we feel like 100% good about ourselves, because what I noticed with the world of people, and I deal with a lot of people, they're always putting themselves down. There's always the bad things. And, the, and, and I'm not that type of person, as you probably know, Tim. I'm more of a smiley up, up person. Um, I do address all my problems because I'm the only one that kind of has them since they're mine. I might as well own them. But I do try to get rid of them. But is there any time in our life that we can actually feel 100% that we're there and we're fine with ourselves? Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what this program does. Ah, see, I like it. I like it. I like it. Wait, so I, there I, is a way. There is a way to feel pure about yourself and good about yourself, even though you've made all those dreadful mistakes and also those beautiful things you've done. Right. Well, there, you come to realize that they really weren't mistakes. They were uh -huh. from your programming. So if you're programmed negative because your parents were negative and your parents, you know, went through you know, World War II and their parents went through World War I and their parents went through whatever other conflict there was all the way back to Adam and Eve and, you know, Cain, you know, murdering Abel and, you know, so on and so forth. All of this stuff is put into our ancestral programming and then you, you feel oppressed and they felt not good enough and they felt that they were unworthy or undeserving or whatever. And all of that's put down throughout the ages in the six year old program. And it stays the same because it's all placed in the unconscious subconscious. So Tim, how do you feel, Tim, how do you feel about yourself? Say that again. How do you feel about yourself? I feel great about myself. Isn't that I mean, nice? There is nothing that I would change uh, that even all of that negative stuff that happened to me and negative stuff happens to everyone. You of know, course it's, it does. It's, I have a lot of it back. Yeah. <laughs> no one, no one sits in a lonely chair, chair as far as negative to them in, in their life. The thing is that if it continues to bother them and in actuality, all of that continues to run them. Yeah. So when we go into the unconscious subconscious and we pull those weeds and we plant the polar opposite positive in that hole, right, that we create by pulling the weed out, that starts to be nurtured by the unconscious subconscious. And that's why my clients have seen remarkable exponential success. Absolutely. Absolutely. But now, so what I'm going to tell my audience out there is go out and start weeding your garden. But not literally weeding your garden, but start weeding. Um, AJ, what would you like to ask uh, Marlene um, a, a question? Yes, I wanted to ask Marlene about um, Wonder Woman and uh, your episodes there. Was that fun? And can you talk to us a little bit about uh, the Wonder Woman series? Uh, well, 
the in those days um we didn't use the jerk off cables i was a pioneering stunt woman but i was also a very serious actress i had been acting in college i was still acting but i kept doing stunts in order to get opportunities to act and so uh she beats me up in the living room she throws me oh and i was trained how to do this but the thing you learn when you aren't doing gymnastics and you go into stunts is that they've removed all the pads and now you're hitting the ground, you're hitting the concrete, your back. She threw me on over the couches onto my back on the floor. And then I had to pretend that my legs were, you know, today they use a jerk off cable when, when a woman throws you, I had to use my own gymnastics legs that she had thrown me and flip in the midair and, and all of this. And um, what's, what's really interesting is we brought a pad in, for her uh in one of the time one of the moments i don't know what it was for but she tripped on the corner of the pad <laughs> coming after me and kind of fell down and she was wonderful it was thanksgiving and she bought us a huge turkey but i felt so bad and then you know here no pad was bought in for me to uh, fall on we See, God has a funny way of doing things, doesn't he? Yeah, it, <laughs> I, I would wear a little boy's football girdle and in the gauntlet, I go off that train and every, all these other things. Um, a little boy's football girdle with one little tiny pad down the back and two on the hips. And then I wore knee pads and elbow pads. And sometimes if the blouse was too thin, you'd use little falsies over the elbows. But you know, it's not enough. And you always walk away banged up. Uh, something always goes wrong and you're always, um, you know, but I was one of the, if not at the, during those years, Wikipedia lists me as uh, the top, top Hollywood stunt women of the seventies and eighties, one of the most prominent. And, um, you know, I um, forgot my thought, <laughs> uh, but they just was, um, I was trained. Oh, this is what I started to say. I was probably the only stunt woman back then that was an elite gymnast. I had Olga Corbett type of talent. I don't have that talent now, but I, I had it back then. And, you know, so uh, it was, it was wonderful. There's, there's two books about my life being published right now, where I talk about the uh, acting and the stunts and the car accident and that almost took my life and it's a very exciting time that I've come this far. You sound like a cat with nine lives. Yeah, it's so so true. <laughs> but I wanted I wanted to mention that as a young child from the time I was eight until I was 28, I was never allowed to speak to my father. I was told to shut up and go to my room. I couldn't say one word. He was Bulgarian. So as we were, as Tim was, and that was the best question to have me ask Tim that and be very honest that that's my problem. And um, I, I reflected back to me that that's why I have trouble picking up the phone and talking to anyone is because I, I think I'm supposed to shut up every minute. And that okay. reflects that, that is really great that I had that awareness just now. Yeah, yeah, so now you know that it's really not your fault, actually, and you can open up and kind of fill it. You can that fill it that free now. Yep, yeah, it wasn't my fault at all. I was eight. No, mm -hmm. you were too young. And so you're... what did you think? Go ahead. I'm sorry, AJ, AJ go ahead. I want to let you know that you're amazing and you're wonderful. You really are. And you're, and you've done so much and a <laughs> contribution to the Hollywood um, film and TV industry. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Tim, you for, what having, you think, me, for uh, having me with Tim. Yeah. What do you think, Tim, of, um, of Marnie um, not allowed to talk to her father? <clears throat> I mean, you had the alcoholic problem growing up. She had not talking to her father. I had a sister that kept me away from everything and I was the worst person ever lived. Um, what was yours, AJ? I wanted to dance and, and I, I guess I didn't have the opportunity. I didn't get to go do it. So yours is pretty mild compared to ours. But um, Tim, what do you think about all this? I mean, everybody's more or less the same, aren't they? They've all got something. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's, um why history repeats itself is that this six-year-old program and then the other stuff that happens to you you know up to 20 years old keeps repeating itself so 
if people feel oppressed and they feel not good enough and not smart enough and not beautiful or handsome enough and they feel unlovable, their, their behavior, their ego actually acts the opposite of that feeling is what psychiatrists say to overcome that feeling. Yeah. So if you, if you're, you've been shut up all your life or told that you're stupid and so on and so forth, and you feel undeserving and unworthy and so on and so forth, that's going to manifest in your life. So that's why going back to the, really the 20 years, we do a few exercises to get into where, where the actual root causes are because many of those bad memories are now repressed but they're still manifesting. So we have some exercises to be able to determine what they are. The main exercise is to do what I call a timeline lifeline, where we do a, a vertical timeline, um, or I'm sorry, a horizontal timeline of the stuff that's happened to people so we can see the patterns. Yeah. So if someone has the same relation, type of relationship and they, you know, date a bad guy and date a bad guy and date a bad guy, you know, and, and highly have a cat. <laughs> many, many people do, you know, it's the same type of person. It's just a different face. That's a different person. Listen, unfortunately, I've, I've got to kind of, we're, we're getting close to the end. Um, Marnine, I would like to know um, where people can reach you um, and what uh, um, of all your platforms. Okay, um, on the IMDb, just type in Marnine, M-A-R-N-E-E-N, Fields, F-I-E-L-D-S, and everything about me is on the IMDb. And what are you actually doing right now? Uh, what is your forte right now? My, me? Yes, well, you. I'm, I'm very busy as um, a script writer. I'm an award-winning uh, script writer, and I've got several screenplays that okay. are in circulation pitching. I'm the author of two, auto, an autobiography and a biography, and I'm, uh, I'm very busy as a composer. I've released uh, 20 award-winning pop blues and soft rock songs, and I'm, mm. I'm very busy. I'm, I'm, I'm just, uh, and, I, and I teach acting. I've got an, a book on acting. I don't know if you're busy, but I do know one thing. You're very talented. Oh, thank um, you very much. Very, very talented. Um, Tim, how can people reach you now, where they can get hold of you? Because you are an amazing man, and I think a lot of people would love to sort of get in touch with you and help yeah, them along I'm this way. Unique in that um, people can actually call me, and I, and I answer the phone. So, <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> what's, your, what's your phone number? <laughs> so the, the, uh, office, the office phone number is 702-748-3586. You can see more at sm3success.com. So that's sm, the number three, success.com. AJ, I think we're coming close to the end of our show. This has been amazing. amazing. We have learned so much. Uh, Marnine with her inspiration, her talents, and also um, Tim Zimmerman. Um, he just reaches out all the time to everybody and anybody out there that can get in touch with him and, and kind of sort their, their lives out probably need it more now than they've ever needed it because of the um, COVID-19 and the lockdown has sort of given people a lot of time to sit at home and think about their lives. And